So good morning, everyone. Thanks everyone for being here this morning. I truly, truly appreciate it. Today, we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna talk about letting those winners run. And I, it's a trade management thing. And it's, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, letting the winners run is one of those catchphrases out there. Um, in trading but it's a if everyone would agree in here it's a lot harder to to actually um a lot harder to actually do than it is to say everyone agree with that letting that winner run particularly when the market's a little bit uh, shaky and it's even harder i think for short-term traders you know, swing traders um, find it to be very difficult. If you're a day trader, you find it almost to be impossible. <clears throat> yeah, the uncertainty of the market makes things kind of, you know, um, difficult. And trying to figure out what is the right thing to do in letting those winners run. Now, for me, everyone knows, I mean, I talk about this one a lot. Everyone knows that I'm in this long-term trade in Walmart. Now, Wally World was, was, is nothing more than a trading pattern that we always trade, right? We break the downtrend, we hold a higher low. There was my entry into the trade. But I think some people get the impression that you buy and just never, never take a profit. So let's talk about the details here. And I'm going to start out with position trading. And the reason I'm going to start out with position trading is because I believe position trading is one of the easiest places to be able to do this. To be able to really let that trade expand itself out for a long period of time. Okay, and it is, um, it's just one of those things that um, can be a little bit stressful at first when you first start to do this. But once you kind of get into the groove of it, it's actually really easy to do. And, and I think a lot of folks would actually enjoy their trading a lot more if they allowed themselves to hold on to some longer term positions. Now, I'm not talking about buy and hold forever, and I'm not talking about never taking profits, okay? We want to make sure that we have good logical stop losses. So you guys see my entry was there. It broke the downtrend, held support. My volatility stop is right, right in that area. So my stop loss goes in. And initially into this trade, what I did is this moved up really sharply and it moved up here and I sold half of the position. I took a profit. Okay, now once you take a profit, and here's one of the things, sometimes I have found when I take half of that profit off, I never ever really find myself an opportunity that I like to add back to the trade. Uh, Tom, actually on this one, I'm using stock. I bought the stock. But yes, if you're thinking about a longer term trade, um, leap options are certainly um, a great place to be. And we've done that before here in, in Rightway, okay? Where we've picked up those leap options. As a matter of fact, I'm holding leap options right now in my trade on GE that I report on every day. And in that trade, I'm up 30% already, uh, over 30%. Okay, now 
I don't want you to think that this is like super, super easy to do because when you look at a chart after it's already produced a nice trend, it's simple, right? Wow, I wish I'd have got into that. But it's not that simple when you're looking at it initially, not knowing what comes next, right? Not knowing what comes next. So in this example, to give you an example, one of the things I like to do, and I believe this in my heart and soul as a trader, is that you have to be comfortable taking profits. Now, here's the thing. I just told you that I took half of the position off up here. Now, there's already people in this room thinking, oh my gosh, you took half of the position out. Look how much money you left laying on the table. How many of you would do that to yourself? Immediately beat yourself up if the stock continued to go up. Oh man, I'm such a stupid trader. I'm so terrible at this. I can't do this. Don't lie to me, because I know we all do that. Right? We'll beat ourselves up. Okay? So some of you in here are feeling like, why in the world would he ever do that? Others in the, in the room are thinking, my gosh, how could he have held it that long? Because remember, this is a weekly chart. One week, two weeks, three weeks, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think it was 11th or 12th week I sold half of the position. Okay. Now, like I said, once you take profit on a trade, you can find it to be very, very difficult to add back to the position, okay? But once I've taken a nice, healthy profit like that, can you guys see, once I take that nice, healthy profit, I can actually relax my stop loss and let that stock move around. I put money in my account, and now I'm really kind of, I don't have a free trade here. I don't have a trade where I'm really playing with somebody else's money necessarily, but I have a trade with a nice profit and this thing would have to really cavitate bad for me to lose money on the trade now, right? If I've already taken half of the trade, the stock has moved this much to the upside, it would require the stock going from here and actually breaking down as much as where I started to the downside for me to actually lose money on the other half of my position. So when that happens, I have a comfort in the trade where I can just relax a little bit. I can let the stock move around and I don't have to worry about the trade. Now, when I think about adding back and, and, and to be upfront and honest, I added back to this trade. I've, I've sold and added back to this trade several times. Okay. So in this position right in here, I bought again right here. This is nothing more than that little wedge pattern breaking up above that high. So I just put alert in there and I added back to the trade. Okay, I took more profits on the trade up here. I took another half off of the trade. You know, I added back, so I took another half off of the trade up in here. We got that big screaming upside move. So I took another half off the trade here. My signal, pressure on the trade, Ricardo. I had too much pressure on, I had so much money in the position, I had pressure on it. I had to take profit off. I needed to take some profit off, wanted to take some profit off. And when you get this kind of volatility and straight up move, I get nervous about that. That's why I'm not chasing a whole bunch of trades in the market right now. When stocks go parabolic, I get nervous about that and I take some profits. Okay. 
Now this time here, and this time over here when I took profits, I sold out of the money calls. Okay. Now you don't have to do that ever, but I chose to do that. I sold out of the money calls. I did my normal 30 delta options out of the money and just to hedge this pullback and time in here so that I can hedge that trade and feel a little bit more comfortable. I did the same thing here. I sold out of the monies, okay? What happened here is that out of the money actually went into the money, okay? And I ran the risk at this point in time of having the entire trade taken away. You don't have to. You don't have to hedge, Rickster. But I feel more comfortable, and, and that's what we're talking about here. How can you make yourself comfortable to hold a trade longer? I feel more comfortable when I know I've got a little downside protection. Because one thing about this kind of position trading is I don't have to look at this every single moment of the day. As a matter of fact, I don't. Sometimes my longer term trades a couple of times a week is all I even take a look at them. Okay. So I'm hedging the position. All right, and I always hedge positions. Now you can see we fell away from here Everything was copacetic eventually in this trade and continued to fall away and I continued to sell out of the money calls against this trade, continuing to hedge the position. Now I had such a nice profit in the trade. What I was worried about here was if we really broke down through price support. Okay, let me get a different color on that arrow that's hard to see. If we broke down below price support in here, it's a high probability I would have closed the trade altogether because we start breaking those major support levels and then we just continue to move down. Okay, so I was working with the bigger patterns here. I'd taken so much profit on this trade, letting this pull back was hard. But because I was hedged, it wasn't hurting me all that much. Certainly, I didn't have the profitability that I had up here. Okay. Then the stock found its support, things started coming in. And I think I, if I remember correctly, I added back over in here, but I didn't add back a full position. And what I mean by full position is I, I, didn't, I didn't go back another half. I went like a quarter because of this big pullback. Um, I just added a little bit back to the trade. Okay. The stock moved up and moved up nicely. Now, from here on out, all I did was sell calls against the position because I already had a really nice position in the trade. Okay, I really had a nice profit. And from here on out, all I did was work at selling calls and managing the upside of the position. Okay. Now over here, once we finally got through all of this mess, and you guys know this because I talked about this, I missed this over here, this potential entry, but I did add more to this trade here. Okay, and I'm still holding that entire position. All right. Now, what's important about this is these kind of trades, when you can, when you can, Provide yourself that security by taking some of those profits, relaxing a little bit, um, focusing on the price action of the chart, and not getting so, um, I call it being myopic, where you're just focused on just one, uh, um, the hard right edge, and oh my gosh, everything's falling apart.
if you can look at the entire chart and try to continue to follow the trend. Okay, this it's how you turn um, pretty simple entry trades into really great profits. Okay, so overall, profits taken out, profits continuing that are unrealized that I hold in this trade, profits that I've taken from selling calls against this all the way up, this trade is now worth more than this to me. Okay. Now, the, the key element in doing this is learning to relax after you've taken some profits. If you can take some profits, relax into the trade. Okay. Um, I haven't brought up the, the, the platform today, but you guys know that in the platform, um, um, I had a trade that I put on in AMD and everyone saw me in right way options put on that trade in AMD. It's only, I think it's only a hundred shares in AMD. And I haven't really done anything to manage it because it's over there in that paper trade account that I'm showing all the time and haven't done anything to manage it. Okay. Haven't sold calls against it. Haven't done anything. And that 100 share position is now up $2,000. Okay, now I'm not telling you or recommending to you that you just ignore trades after you buy them. Okay, but you guys know that I haven't been in that AMD trade all that long. And if you could imagine holding a 100 share position or a leap option, if it were a leap option, it would be worth a whole lot more than that. Can you guys see how you can really change your account by doing some of this? Now, when I talk about position trading, I usually tell people to start slow. They need to go in there and they need to find that trade that they really like, that's talking to them, that looks like a really good thing. And by the way, if, if how many were here when I told everybody about Walmart, that I was going long Walmart, they had bought jet.com and I told everybody that I was buying this and I was gonna hold it for a long period of time. Do you remember? I, I talked about it so much, Rick bought it and Rick's been holding it. Okay, yep, I took profits and then I added back to the trade. Okay. That's right, Rick got in it and to my knowledge, he's still holding it. And he hasn't done any management of it, he just bought it. Okay. Now, it doesn't, there's no hero stuff in this. And I, I want to be really clear on this. Um, a lot of times when you hear people talk about this, they get that, they puff out their chest like they're some kind of king of the world in trading. I want you guys to know that when I'm doing this, I'm as uncertain as anybody is. I don't know what's happening next. And I don't want anybody to think that I do. All I can do is manage myself in the chart, manage good support and resistance levels, and continue to work this trade to the best of my ability. And I think that's really important to understand. There's, can you see that there's really no magic in this? Could, uh, let's talk about this for a second. Could you have just purchased one contract with this entry signal, one contract on a leap option in Walmart and held it? 
could you have just held one? Now notice from here all the way over to here, okay, we got the better part of a year. And then close it. Right? There's nothing hard about that. The hard part is being able to manage yourself. Well, not so much. I mean, we can't act like a robot. We, we're human beings. We're, we've got feelings about everything. And, you know, and, and money is emotional. All right. But we want to do the best job that we can of sticking to a set of rules and sticking to a logic in the chart. That's right, have a plan and stick with that plan and always remember what your plan is on that trade. What are you trying to achieve? Now, we did this um, in Microsoft and we should have stayed in it. Here's proof that you don't have to be a genius at this and make really good money. In right way options, we entered this trade in Microsoft. We entered with a leap option in December 2016. In August of 2017, we ended up getting ourselves called away. Had a short strike against it, got called away on the trade. Oh man, that sucks. Okay, how terrible is that? Well, we made a 99% return. How much does that suck? Okay. Now I could I could beat myself up. Now we've traded we traded some of this in here. Haven't traded this, but we traded some of this in here during that period of time as well. Okay, making additional money in the trade. But that's one of those things you're going to find once you get into a longer term trade, when you start scaling out or don't jump out, and everyone thinks, well, I'll just jump out and get back in. Sometimes it can be very difficult to almost impossible to get back in. Okay, because we'll overthink and we're starting from zero again, right? Here we had a really nice profit. And the reason I went ahead and just said take it, we had sold a call option um, against this and we'd picked up, I can't remember, it was like $1.20 for selling the call option on it. And it just happened to stay above that call option. I said, let's, let's just let them take it. rather than buying back that call option at a loss. So we made a great return on this trade and it really was not all that hard to do. Okay, now what are the key elements here in finding those trades? Well, the key elements are the same elements that we look for every day in a swing trade. We look for a good solid trend. We look for concise price action. Now, when you guys go to a weekly chart, and by the way, you don't have to use a weekly chart. You can use a three-day chart or something like that to slow it down a little bit. Heck, you can use a hike and ashy for all I care. I mean, turn this over to a hike and ashy and just make it a, um, a three-day hike and ashy. How hard is that trade to be in? Just real simple trading management. No hero stuff here. The entries are identical to what we would be doing. I'm gonna go back to my standard chart here and to that weekly and just pull this back. So you guys can see that entry. Here, I need to go to this chart. Is there anything special about that entry? Had I been more on top of it, could have been there. Man, I suck as a trader. 
<laughs> See what I mean? We can beat ourselves up to we can beat ourselves to death the point being is once you find these good solid trends where you enter is all about the entry to your stop and it doesn't matter just get in the trade okay so we need to think about a good solid trend and one of the things that I do guys is and you don't have to do this um, certainly there are stocks that don't fit this category but I I tend to favor longer term trades in these old boring stocks you you always hear about you know the Montley fool you know hey we picked something that was three dollars a share and we knew it was going to go up and and it goes up a thousand percent well what they don't tell you is the volatility of that trade is almost impossible to manage and unless you're just a buy and hold guy that uh, completely wants to believe everything that Montley fool tells you you're not going to be able to hold that Or any of other of those, you know, that hey, we just we're just gonna blindly believe and hold on even though the stock is bouncing all over the place and whipping all over the place. I want the boring stock. I want the easy stock. Okay. Now oftentimes when I'm looking for these trades, I'm also going to want a dividend paying stock. Not always, but most of the time when I'm doing this, I want a dividend paying stock. Now, not because I'm a, I may not be trading it with stock where I'm going to collect the dividends. Okay. But when I have a, a dividend paying stock that's paying a nice dividend, I know I've got the buy and hold crowd are going to hold that forever for the dividend. I've got the institutional crowd that's going to hold on to that and keep plowing into that for that dividend yield. Okay. So what it what it means to me is that um it gives me that stock with more stability. Oh, that little green corner flashing up there? That's just my recorder. It's recording that screen area right there. And I happen to have the screen just set just a little bit wider than that so you can see the recording area. Okay. So the thing is about these trades, guys, and, and I kind of like the weekly charts. These trades are around us all the time. And they can be straight up stocks. Whoops, not Morgan Stanley, um, MasterCard. They, they are around us all the time. But the problem that most of us have when we're short-term swing traders like this is we never take the time to look. If, if I zoom in on this chart over here, you'll see that there's multiple opportunities to take a trade into my um, MasterCard. Do you guys agree? You didn't have to be really good at picking your entry or the perfect entry. There's multiple opportunities to get into that trade. But what we have to do is find those charts that are trending like that. Now, anymore, um, I use um, the LTA scanner for that. You guys know that. But um, if you don't have the LTA scanner, it's just a process of looking at charts, flipping on a weekly chart. And you guys know that I do this all the time. I do this every single week as part of my process. When I'm doing my Sunday afternoon work, my Sunday evening work, preparing for the next week 
it'll be Monday this week. Um, I'm I'm always going to the I'll go to an index like the diamonds. I'll pull up a list of everything in the diamonds, and I start looking at those charts on a weekly. And I've marked those charts up, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those big trends, those big breakouts, multi-year, or here's a year-long breakout. You can see what happened after this year-long breakout in Visa. I'm looking for those kind of trades. Now, I can't catch them all. Nobody can. Don't want to give you the impression that I catch every single great trade out there. I certainly don't. I miss a lot of them. And so does everyone else. But it doesn't take too many of these trades to really do something special in your account. Okay. Yes, you have to be willing to hold through earnings. And I've shown you guys how to manage through earnings reports. We've done it right in front of you. Okay, the last time on Walmart, I went through the entire, entire situation on this earnings report that bounced all the way up here. I bought a put option to protect the downside of the trade. The day before the earnings report. The earnings report came out. I lost money on this because it bounced up. And this one bounced up so much, you guys know, that I immediately sold. Let me show you the drawing. Well, wait, I can't. I think I took them off. I sold an out-of-the-money call up here right after the earnings report. I mean, within minutes of the gap up, I sold an out-of-the-money call. The out-of-the-money call paid for any losses because of the rapid pop-up and pullback, paid for any losses in the put, and I've continued to sell calls against this trade, protecting this position in that situation. My stop loss was one of those, was a catastrophic loss. Hey, if it drops down so far, I have a put option that gives me the right to sell the stock at this point. Okay, that's it. It's, it's not that hard. I think we make, sometimes in our swing trading, we make so much out of, out of earnings events, we're scared to death. And, and in swing trades, we kind of have to be. Uh, Bob asks, no, the, the, uh, it's an out-of-the-money put. I'm putting in a, well, like I just marked there, I'm putting in a stop loss, a perfect stop loss, and it's always going to be out of the money. Okay. Here's the thing about trailing stops, Stanley. Have you ever found them a trailing stop to work? I mean, really work for you? Or does the volatility get you stopped out? See, we like to use that easy. It's, it's the trailing stop is easy button. Now I don't have to think about it. Okay. Just tell me, I just set it at this far apart. Now I don't have to think about it anymore. You cannot do that. There's no such thing as that. There's only one real circumstance where I use a trailing stop. And that's if I'm in a swing trade and the stock just takes off like a rocket. And I don't want to watch it anymore. My money is already made. Now I'm just going to put a trailing stop on to stop me out of when it pulls back. That's the only time I use a trailing stop. Now, you can try to use a trailing stop in here, but when you're trying to hold a longer term trade, you're going to find you're just going to get stopped out a lot. 
that it's not going to hold in place. What is the most important thing to setting a stop loss? Anybody? Price action. Price action. Price tells us where support is, right? I told you about this right here. If I broke down below there, I was going to have a problem with this trade. Because ev overall, if I held in that area, I still maintain trend, right? As long as I held that price support, I was okay in this trade. Price is the most important thing to managing your trade. And it's not some arbitrary, as much as we would like it to be, it's not some arbitrary trailing stop that you cannot plan the volatility of. Okay. You can't do it. And if you micromanage or attempt to micromanage one of these trades, you're just, you're never going to hold one. You're, you're always going to be stopped out. You're never going to get that if you micromanage. Now, I will tell you guys, this was hard for me to learn. It was tough because I have that same emotional thing that you guys have in a trade that, that we all have in a trade, not wanting to lose money or not wanting to give back gains. Okay. So you have to think about the longer term. When you think about a longer term, I mean, overall, what's, my, what's Walmart done? Over the last 12 years, 11 years, well, well more than that, last 20 years, what overall, what has Walmart done? Gone up. Of the market, what's the overall of the market? What's the overall market done over that, over that period of time? It's gone up. Okay, so you have to get over the micromanagement and just trust that the market is gonna to continue to go up and your stock, as long as it stays in a trend, allow that trend to work. Not every trend is perfect. This was by far no perfect trend. And the reason I'm showing you this is to show you there's no perfect, I mean, it's easy to look at Microsoft and say, oh yeah, man, I could have held that forever. Wrong. That's an easy trend. Right? That's the kind of trend you dream about. But why aren't we in them? Why can't we stay in them? Because we micromanage them. Right? So on your longer term positions, you have to adapt that mindset. Hey, if I find a good entry here, I'm going to let the trade work. Okay, let me show you one that I just looked at this morning. What do you guys think of that entry signal right there in Etsy? Is this any different than the Walmart trade that I just showed you? Where my entry was. It's almost identical. Broke the downtrend. Held this support. Right? If I go back to Walmart. What was the entry? Right here. Broke the downtrend. Held the support. It's no different 
than this trade in Etsy. Now here's the question that you have to ask yourself. If I put on this trade and initiate this position, setting my stop loss here, will I allow that to work? Will I allow that to work if it pops up here and then pulls all the way back? Because sometimes that happens, just like it did in Walmart, right? How are you going to get into this trade, which is an identical entry to this trade, and stick through this for the big win if you micromanage it. And this, by the way, guys, pretty simple trend. Would you guys agree? Pretty simple trend, not all that volatile. Okay, so we have to get out of our own head and we have to manage with a different frame of mind. Hey, stock is trending, things are looking good, the market is trending, stay with the stock. All right. Rickster, I get that. I get that. Do you think there wasn't an overall concern for the market over here? There's always an overall concern for the market for some reason or another. What happened here in 2017 in the market? Remember we had that big pullback in here in the market? So you don't want to put your whole portfolio into this and you've got to start slow. You've got to take one position at a time and start letting those profits build. Okay. Letting those profits build. Because we don't know, and I and I agree, guys, you guys know that this market could be extremely toppy, ready for correction at any time, that kind of thing. But we don't know that to be true, right? We believe that that is a situation that the market is in, but we don't know that to be true. It's just a possibility. All right, so how can we deal with that in a market like this? Well, one of the things we can do is we can look for longer term trades on stocks that have been really beaten down already. Okay. I'm um, Barbara or Let's see, when, when would I have sold Etsy? I can't, I didn't hold it, so I couldn't tell you that, guys. I can tell you if I bought it down here, and if I had managed this correctly, I might still be holding it here. I may not have sold it yet. I mean, look at Walmart. There was nothing smooth about that move up. I'm still holding it. So it all depends on how you see it, view it, and want to hold that trade.
I don't know. I, I didn't trade it, so I can't give you. Oh, I would have done exactly this because that's just baloney. It's entirely possible I could still be holding. Um, I've shown this before many times. Disney. Over here. I held this trend for years. Four years. Is that a perfect, smooth, easy trend to hold? No, there's all these back and forth in it. But I held it. I held it all the way through. In fact, I didn't stop myself out until over here. On the trade. Um, Jerry, a 52-week low wouldn't necessarily wouldn't be setting up a, a potential entry. Remember what entries we need. It's the pattern itself. It's a price action again. If the stock is at a 52-week low, it's probably still in a downtrend. Now that can help you build a watch list for possibles, but we want to see that stock breaking that downtrend, holding support, and then showing us those entry signals. And you know why that's true, guys? We want that because this, we break the downtrend, we hold here. This is proof that institutions are starting to support the stock again. That's all it is. All we're trying to do is follow the big institutions. Uh, oil sector is very beaten up. Absolutely. But it's got a lot of recovery to do before there's going to be a trade. They're talking, you know, an, an estimate out right now, and whether it's right or not, I don't know. One estimate is out that because of the China situation, oil will, be, will drop to $25 a barrel. This isn't done in oil, I don't think. I don't choose to try and pick a bottom. I want to pick where I see institutions are starting to support the trade again. I don't want to wager my money on, on that gamble that, oh, it's oversold, it has to come back. That is just not true. I mean, all you got to do is look at WorldCom, um, and there's tons and tons of charts. Bear Stearns been on the, had been on the market for 150 some years, 30 days out of business. Okay, so don't predict when a bottom is in or that you know that, gosh, oil has gone down so much it has to come back up. We know it will come back up. We just don't know when. And so we have to watch and we have to wait for the next entry. Take OIH, for example, oil holders, ETF. There's nothing here yet. Certainly, incredibly oversold. Okay. And it could stay that way for a long time. Why could it stay that way even beyond what they're talking about with China? Because our president is bound and determined to be the number one producer of oil out there to remove all foreign dependency on oil. We're pumping like we, I mean, we're pumping like crazy. Looking for new places to pull oil out of the ground. We could continue sinking in oil for the long time to come. The only way we know that is turned is by letting the downtrend break and see support coming into that trade. And then we try to pick that up. So those are the places where I look for those entries into trades. You guys know that I was looking into 
3M. 3M was one of those stocks that tremendously beat down. Okay? And on the shorter term, I really could have taken a trade here. Didn't do it. You guys know, I, in fact, people were asking me, did you buy 3M yet? No, I haven't bought it yet. And it was really because of this bigger downtrend that I wasn't real excited about the trade yet. So we have to wait, right? There's lots of these fallacies that can occur. Okay, so we have to th we have to just really be concentrate on these trades. Now, sometimes I think because we're swing traders, quick traders, things like that. How many of you agree we overthink this stuff? We let we let that swing trade stuff enter any any ability to hold a trade after it's produced a profit. We get too much influence, and it's real easy to do. We get too much influence from that daily swing around. And that's why we have to have that plan on this trade. This is what I'm trying to do with this trade. Um, I can show you an even longer term trade. This was one of my longest long-term trades ever. There's my entry. I took a risk on this entry with that resistance above, but I did it because this was a more than a year of consolidation right there. That's why I took that trade. And I thought, heck, if it only goes up to here, I'm gonna be in good shape. I didn't get out of this trade until over here got shook out of this trade. And I told you guys when I got shook out of that trade, that's 2013. to 2018, almost 2019. Okay. This was a stock trade, yes. You know, Hershey could have been a really good one. There's that weekly chart. Go here. There's that weekly breakout right in here. Here's that nice higher low. Break of the downtrend was right through here. Okay. Really nice spot would have been over in here for an entry someplace. Hershey could have been fantastic. It's always easy to look back and say, man, that would have been a great trade, right? And I got tired of saying that to myself. Man, that could have been a great trade. So what did I do? I started studying the longer term charts and I started marking them up. Okay, I started waiting for those trades to identify themselves. And then I entered those positions. Yeah, it's real easy to read history, isn't it? <laughs> But when you look over here, guys, can, do you see any really good potential entries in here into Hershey? Just using our normal price action rules, maybe right there. Not that tough, right? So 
So we need to start, if you want to get those longer term positions and really hold a few, here's what I recommend. You start with just one. Find one trade that you think that you can get into, that you like the setup, you can get into and handle it, okay? Now all of us, every single one of us in this room, I would wager money on it is underinvested. Right? As swing traders, we, we never even have, rarely do we even have half of our money in the market. Right? So we have a big pile of money sitting there that's doing absolutely nothing for us. Okay. So what we need to do is come up with a plan. Of that remaining money, let's say you set a ratio. Hey, I'm gonna allow, I'm gonna keep 25% of my account available for swing trading. Okay? That means that you have a pot of money of 75% that's setting absolutely idle. So what can we do with it? We can start looking for stocks or ETFs that are beginning those longer term trends and we can start picking up a position or two. Now here's what I'd recommend to make this easy. We follow a rule here, right? No more than about 3% of your account into any one trade. Okay, can we follow the same kind of rule here? No more than 3% of this account into any one trade. And perhaps you might say, because it's such a larger trade, maybe 2%. Because we know when we take longer term trades, the initial stop is usually larger, right? So we may say, hey, I only feel comfortable doing 2% or 1.5%, fine. Find that number that you feel comfortable with. Okay. And then start looking for that next or that first longer term trade. And we're going to allocate some dollars to that. And we're going to work to build a portfolio over a period of time, not all at once. So when you're nervous about a market like this, and I agree, we could be very nervous about this market. Should we be running out and trying to find three or five trades of these tomorrow? No. But it's okay. If you're thinking about, hey, I'm risking 2% or 1.5% of this account in one long-term trade right now, are we taking too much risk? Uh, Malcolm, that is exactly correct. Um, Rick will take higher percentage trades. He's often around 5%. <clears throat> now, why would it be acceptable maybe for Rick to take a larger size trade than it would be for someone who's kind of learning or struggling to trade? Rick has confidence in his technical abilities. Would you guys agree with that? He knows what trade he likes. Yeah, experience. He knows, he sees his trade when he sees it. Exactly, he's a great pattern trader. He's a great price action trader, okay? But when we're building confidence, now I will tell you this, and Rick will tell you this, 
he doesn't have the confidence to hold a long-term trade very often. I mean, almost never. The only reason he's been able to hold Walmart is he bought it in another account that he doesn't even look at. It's a buy and forget. Okay. Now, the fact is Rick has done a tremendous job in growing that account very, very quickly. All right. How many of you feel confident enough to put that much money into a trade? When you have a $10,000 account buying five contracts. So be careful with that, Malcolm. It, that confuses people a lot. And I'm trying to talk to the folks that don't have the extreme confidence that Rick does in his pattern recognition and trading. We have to build a confidence first, right? And if we're going to start doing longer term trading, we have to build a confidence in that as well. We have to prove to ourselves that we can do it. And if we have problems with micromanagement, even taking a smaller than normal position to help you manage that fear of risk initially, to start you down this path of letting these long, big trades run. Okay. It, it can be, Malcolm, it, it definitely can be. And you just have to, you just have to realize that our job as a trader is not to try and mimic another trader. We have to have our own plan. That's what we're discussing here, right? To have your plan, the plan that makes you feel comfortable doing this. Okay, you cannot follow my results or Rick's, Rick res, Rick's results if you don't build the confidence in being able to follow these trades. Don't compare to another trader. Don't compete with another trader. Compete with yourself. Am I improving? That's what we have to worry about. Not what Rick is doing, not what I'm doing. What are you doing and how is that fitting your plan? We all have different experience levels. We all have different risk tolerances. We all have different hangups about money. We all have different ideas about how we want this trading career to go. And so we all have to follow our plan, the plan that makes us feel comfortable in the trade, that we can do it. And if we over trade it, now, I will tell you, there's times that I've had, and this will make you guys choke. In a long-term trade, I've had as much as 10% in one trade. I had extreme confidence in the market and extreme confidence in the trade. But I'm not going to tell you that's what you should do because 99% of the time, I'm going to error to the short, smaller side, the 3%, so I can manage the risk of the trade. I don't feel out of control. Okay. So we find that one trade. And then we look, we get this one. Hey, this one's starting to profit, feeling a little bit more comfortable. Might even be able to take some of the trade off. 
adjust the stop loss up. Hey, I'm feeling pretty comfortable in this. Now we go out and we look for trade two. That's how we do this. You know, there's an old saying, uh, an old joke. How do you need an elephant? One bite at a time. Right? Exactly. One bite at a time. So how about we take a strategy like this and we consume it one bite at a time. We build our confidence. We work on putting together those trades that we can hold over a period of time. Now, Bob C., I'm going to I'm going to go back here. We all know Bob is Bob is the master has been the master of trading Baba. And we know cuz he's told us and this is no secret, about 140,000 made in 2017 on Baba. Just trading Baba. Now this is a weekly chart of Baba. Here's another thing that I think could be a wise thing to think about. If we're doing a job of trading in and out of the same trade over and over, because we find that nice daily trend and we're trading in and out and in and out and in and out of that trade, making money like crazy, what if we switched over to a weekly chart and say, hey, while I'm doing this, I know the trend is here, maybe put on a small position for a longer term hold. Remember, we got a big portion of our account setting over there idle. Maybe we go find that one or two contract position that we just buy a leap option. Hey, I'm trading the heck out of this over and over and over to the upside. Maybe I can enhance that by putting on a longer term trade. That doesn't mean that you have to stop this, right? You can keep doing this, buying these swings and making money on it. Leap options can be a lot of fun, can't they? <laughs> and, and would you say they are, they're exciting because they really change your account, don't they? That longer term. Now, please understand, guys, when I say longer term, it doesn't have to be that you're planning to hold this forever. How many of you, had you entered this trade here on Shopify, whoops. Somewhere in here around 200, would have been perfectly happy to say, you know what, I got stopped out up here at 350. Anybody have a problem with that? And that's just six months. Any problem with doing that? Anybody gonna beat themselves up for making 100 bucks a share? Right? So when we find these big trends or we find these new emerging trends that we want to trade with the swing trade, maybe we just have to step back and take a look at the big pattern. What's going on here? Is there an opportunity? We can keep swinging that trade over and over and over. You know, we, we brought up J&J. &J. J and J on the weekly is not a pretty chart, is it? It's a mess. Boy, we look at this on a daily chart. Man, that is an easy swing trading chart. But on the weekly, who wants to buy that for a weekly trade? There might have been something up here if you were right on top of it, but probably most of us would look at that and go, that is just a mess. 
Don't want to be part of that, right? Yeah, it's all over the place. It's wiki, it's messy. But we run across a stock like this, and we go, now wait a minute. Hmm. Wanna see a stock that'll make you cry? Makes me cry because I didn't buy it. I'm not in it. This thing's only been trending up since 2012. Possible entry into this trade, maybe somewhere right in here. 60 bucks. And it's 278. These are the kind of charts that I look back and I kick myself. It's not because I got into a trade and I happen to micromanage myself out of it and I'm finding a difficulty getting back in. I don't kick myself for making money. I don't kick myself uh, because I closed a trade too early and it would, would have gone up because I made money on it. The things I kick myself on are the things where I see this and I've still not got in the trade. And all of that period of time, there were tons of opportunities to enter this position. Even in this last year, tons of opportunities to enter that trade to make $100 a share. But I didn't do it. That's where I kick myself. Because I didn't take the time to look at the chart, evaluate, and put myself in that position. Well, you don't know that with any company, Humdinger. I mean, <laughs> uh, you guys know me. I think this is about as close to a fraud as I've seen in a company. But it doesn't matter, right? I mean, we don't know. You kind of feel that way too, Bob? <laughs> okay, so we don't know that about any company. What we have to do is evaluate the price action of the chart. And that's all we really have to do, guys. Get out of your own head, evaluate the price action of the chart, and decide if that's something that you want to be in. I can tell you without question, the only thing, the only time I'm ever going to be in Tesla is a short. Until this thing really starts to make money, and, I, and I'm not even sure then. And it's my personal problem with Tesla. I'll admit that. I think the guy at the helm is a freaking idiot. He's a good dreamer. And I think he's a great showman. And other than that, that's it. Now that's my problem. Doesn't have to be your problem. What we have to do, and I, I freely admit that on this trade. Okay. But it shouldn't deter me. I've shown this one before. It shouldn't deter, deter me from making these kind of trades and buying a six month option. I can still manage a six month option even if it turns south, right? Yeah, he's too busy being a rock star. Um, yeah, Barbara, I will generally not take a weekly or a longer term position trade right ahead of an earnings report. 
okay? What I want to do is I want to catch that trade and hopefully have a profit in that trade prior to the earnings report. That way I'm comfortable, I've got that cushion to manage around that earnings report. Okay. Proctor. Proctor trying to break this resistance up here. So what do we need to do, Rickster, when we talk about that trade? What has to happen? This needs, we crossed over once and we failed. What do we need to have happen here? Same as always. We need that proof of support. And I honestly want to see it start to calm down on these weekly swings. Look at these big swings. I want to see it calm down. And it will calm down if it finds that support in here and starts to move methodically. Okay, uh, you're right, sorry, I'm on a daily. There we go, all right. So give me some follow through here on this trade. There may be a trade here. Yep, I, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry, I was looking at a daily. Um, still quite a little bit of range in this, but that's okay. If this follows through to the upside, you're exactly right. There may be an entry into a longer term trade here. Now, one thing I will tell you is I'm less excited about long term entries at all time highs. Can you guys kind of understand that? I'm less excited about them when they hit all-time highs. There was an old saying years and years ago, if you want to make money in the market, just buy the all-time high. I don't think that's true anymore. So I prefer looking at those stocks that have done this, where they break down here and I'm looking for entries over into here, up into here. You know, that, you know, where we finally break through this resistance and hold. I'm, I'm gonna be more favoring those kind of trades. But that doesn't mean that that's not a potential upside trade in that Procter & Gamble could continue to fly higher from here. I can't tell you that, I wouldn't tell you that. But hopefully you kind of understand why I kind of favor the beat up stock for that longer term trade. You know, one that um, I keep thinking um, um, is finally gonna get its act together is ExxonMobil, but nope, not, not yet. It just can't get its act together. And with the new oil issues and stuff like that, I think this is probably gonna go much lower. All right, um, does anyone remember this trade in Caterpillar? Um, see, I gotta remember where my drawings were on that. There, right there. Right way options, I talked about this trade over here. I don't know if anyone remembers that. And I identified this great big Caterpillar wedge. And I got in that trade. Those are the kind of trades that I like to look for. Bob C, you remember that? This was just a whopping win. Okay, and that's what I look for. I look for those big patterns and those weekly charts. I look for those bottoms that get formed, you know? Um, I look for that big pattern. I'm patient for a trade. Um, yeah, you definitely don't want to end up putting yourself 
for the diversification, you don't want to end up putting yourself all in one sector. You know, guys, if you go to the members page and look in the members page, in the junk drawer, you're going to find a couple watch lists. Okay, one is a core long. I spent a year putting together these two, uh, one a full year. I went to every website, every ETF website, studied their, their metrics, okay? It's when I put these two together. Now, this probably needs to be updated because it's been several years ago when I did this, okay? But this is here because I do this exact same thing even with my mom. I manage my mom's money for her. she she gets a nosebleed about every time we talk about it but <laughs> cuz she can't stand the stress <laughs> and I do this for friends I, well I shouldn't say very few um they're they're really family members that I do this with that folks that want some longer term holds, more of a passive, and I go through this list and we're looking for trades. Trades that are beginning trends, reversing downtrends, those kind of things, and we look for diversification by using ETFs. Okay, and if we want to supplement by adding in a stock or two, something along those lines, we do that. But you guys can take this list is there any reason why we couldn't have seen that downtrend and picked up a trade here and held Iway R through now? And all of this information is here, guys. It's free for you guys to have. Core ETF list. It's over in the junk drawer. Core ETF list. And then there's the core ETF short list. And this is when I'm looking for when the market really starts going south. And I think there may be a time here in the relatively near future where that could occur. So I have this core short list. Now the core short list is very small. Okay. This is where I look for those stocks that um, are leveraged. Now you can see this is a three times bull, but when the market starts falling, if DRN starts to fall, it's also, I mean, think about that. If it's gonna fall, if that index is gonna fall or that area is gonna fall, this is gonna fall three times faster. And I start looking through here for trades. Okay, I've, I've made a lot of money in the past on FAS when financials started to break down. Okay, so if we get, I don't know that financials are going to break down again, but if they were to do that, you can see there's an opportunity here. But take a look at FAS. Is there a pretty good entry right here where you could have got in in November? and still be holding FAS. I do both MT. It all depends on what my what my intention, what the trade is. Um I I still I still kind of prefer using options. But you guys know sometimes options aren't they aren't the best, right? Um, prices are bad or there's not enough trading in them or something like that and that's one of the reasons why I might choose to go with the stock or it's something that I really have a fundamental belief in that it's it's gonna do well over a course of time and sometimes I'll buy the stock then okay 
Okay, so that's my core short list. And there's plenty of stuff in here. We, you know, we can look at stocks like SSO. When, when the market starts to fall, when, when the SPY starts to fall, this thing's gonna fall at double the speed of the, of the SPY. Or we can do SDS and trade it inverse. This is the inverse. This will rise two times faster than the SPY falls. So we can stay with our long trading strategy and we could buy SDS. And believe me, this thing makes money, serious money at times, okay? You have to log into the website, Jerry. Make sure you're logged into the website and then just click on the Right Way Options Members tab and it'll take you right there. If it's not opening up for, for you, it's something on your system. You might want to empty the cache. Clear the cache of your browser. SPXU is an ultra pro. I think it's three times short the market. I'd have to look again, but I think it's the ultra pro. I think it's three times short, more leverage. And a lot of times the differences are gonna be things like how much it's traded, um, expense ratios, um, 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 the implied volatility of the prices and the options. Those are things you all ha always have to weigh, particularly on these, um, these kind of trades, okay? You always have to weigh those and make sure you're paying attention to that. QID, QID is an inverse short on the Qs. When the Qs start to fall, this will start to rise. Which I think is smart, Malcolm. A lot of people jump into these without a knowledge of what they're actually doing here. And, and honestly, I think that makes sense because the only way you can achieve two or three times short positions is by using options. And a lot of people don't understand that they're actually trading options when they're trading these. And I think it's probably wise that they understand that. Yeah, three times short. Yeah. Rather than two times short. Okay. Now, just real briefly, let's talk about, now you guys have been here a long time, an hour and a half, um, and I don't want to take up uh, much more of your time here, but let's, um, let's take a second and let's think about how we can do some of this with our swing trades, letting trades run. Now, I know the way I do it, and it may be different for you guys, but the way I do it, if I catch a trade, like this trade that we had here in Etsy, in this position here, and I know a lot of folks, after they entered this trade, boy, that first couple of days up and they sold, they got out of the trade. It's the quality of the pattern, the breakthrough of that resistance that kept me in that trade longer but one of the things that you can do and you guys know that i did this the stock moved up a couple three days and then i sold that out of the money call up here on that position sold that out of the money call to hedge the trade and all that really does is it gives me that it's like that safety blanket if the stock decides to turn around quickly and fall back i have that little safety blanket 
on the trade. It gives me less risk in the position. You know, you hear Bob C all the time call it free money. Just picked up some free money because somebody was willing to buy it up here at that price and it, it offsets that risk if this were to pull back. Okay, and so that helps me. The other thing that helps me in holding these positions longer is to take partial profits. You guys will often find, even if I think the trade has more upside opportunity, I take part of the trade off before a weekend. You guys know that that's pretty much my habit. Fridays are a day where I take profits. And if I have a nice fat profit in here and I can take half of the trade off, three quarters of the trade off heading into Friday, likely going to do that. Going to bank some money. And then I can relax a little bit. Now, part of being able to do that is getting over the greed, right? Hey, I got this much money, I want more. Well, we've all made that mistake, right? Where we always want more and turn it into a loss. If we wanna be successful traders, if we wanna be consistently profitable traders, the only way we can be consistently profitable is get comfortable with taking profits consistently. You're probably like, well, thanks, Captain Obvious. But as obvious as that is, every single day we run into people that won't take profits because I want more, and then they end up with less or even a loss because they weren't willing to take profits. Would you guys agree with that? Has anyone in here not experienced that? We're looking back, you go, man, I would have had a nice winning trade if I'd have just taken the profit. Yeah, a lot of times, right? Yeah, more than once. And so being, being a good steward of your money, being a wise trader and wanting, having the desire to be consistently profitable. And you know, one of the things is, I think differently the way I think than I think a lot of folks think, is I treat my trading as a business. And if I get through the week and I've not made any money, how much longer am I gonna be able to stay in business? Right? So as a business, I have to make profits, okay? I may not always make the profits I would like to make, but I gotta make those profits consistently to keep the lights on, the power going, all of those kind of things. I have to make profits. Okay, so even if I don't have the trade that I was hoping for, I don't have the profit in it that I was hoping for, you're going to find me often closing partials, halves, three quarters of trades as I head into a weekend. You've seen me do this before on trades where a stock has moved up nicely. I've closed half of the trade heading into the weekend. And then the next week it continued on up and I closed another half. I only have a quarter left of the original position. I close another half heading into the weekend. Well, NB, that comes down to your strategy of trading, okay? You guys, I mean, you know this, a lot of people talk, uh, you know, Mike, um, you know, how great Mike is doing in his trading, and we talk about that from time to time. And it, it, Mike is more comfortable taking the small profit and having the win and not worrying about what happens after that.
You guys know that I do some of that as well when we traded Starbucks. And I told everybody about this. Stock moved down. Be careful, guys. Watch this support down here in case that bounces. We started to show signs of a potential little hold of support, and I took profits. One day in the trade. Out. I had set it up as a really quick short-term trade, and I wasn't going to let that profit go away. Okay. Now, that happened to work in my favor. Stock turned around and went back up. But it could just as easily continue to do this. Now, the trick to this is, guys, is once you've taken a profit on a trade, stop whining. You made money. Sometimes I would just want to reach through the screen and grab somebody by the shoulders and shake them a little bit and say, you made money. Stop it. Stop putting yourself in this hurt locker because you can't be proud of yourself for taking a profit and making money. We always look back, oh, I could have, I should have. I go, oh, man, I, man, give that up. The market will give us a beating on its own. How about we not help the market beat ourselves up when we take those profits too soon? Here's one thing that I got to say about that that I think is really important. A lot of people in here that would look at Mike Peterson's trading thing where he's taken $75 gain, $80 gain, $85 gain, and left this popped up in here, he was probably out this day. See ya. And left all this money on the table and people in here would just trash the crap out of him for doing that. And then Mike Peterson would turn around and say, well, I made $6,000 last month, what did you do? And you'd go, oh crap. So MB, what's your plan? How are you going to manage your trades? What makes you feel more comfortable in a position? Mike knows what makes him feel comfortable. Stock moves up in his position, he takes the trade. You wanna know why Mike Peterson has a 75, 80% win-loss ratio? Because when it moves up in his direction, he, he says, see ya, and he's gone. Okay. So what I say to that is if you feel more comfortable taking that quick hit trade and walking away, no problem. Here's another thing I'd say. If you got into this trade with three contracts and sell two of them here, can you let the rest of that work for you now? That's right, what is your plan? What is your commitment to the trade? It's really hard if you have a three contract trade here and take profits up here, you knock 20% out of the market on that trade, only have one contract left, it's nearly impossible for you to lose money on that trade now, unless you just stop paying attention to the market. And when we get into this thing, all of this self-talk where we beat ourselves up, we beat ourselves up when we make money because, well, I could have made more. We beat ourselves up when we don't make money. 
How are we ever going to win in the market if we continue to abuse ourselves that way? Guys, it's so much easier. <laughs> it's so much easier to just develop a plan. This is the plan I'm going to trade. And just start trading it. Following the plan. Did I follow my rules? Yes, I did. This trade worked great. Hey, if your plan is make 10% on a trade, every trade to try to make 10%, then you better be taking profits at 10% or you're breaking your rules. You're letting greed get in the way of your plan. Take out a calculator, everyone. Anyone that's got their calculator handy. Okay. I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Do you think it's really hard to find three or four good trades a week that have the possibility of producing an $80 profit? $80, that's with options, 80 bucks. Think about it here, guys. There's one right here, easy 80 bucks. One right here, easy 80 bucks. We can go back through this chart, all different places, there's going to be 80 bucks, 80 bucks, 80 bucks, 80 bucks. Okay? If you can do three of those a week, that's 240 bucks a week. That's $960 a month. $11,520 a year. Is there any shame in taking $80 profits if you do it consistently? There's folks in here looking at that right now that would be absolutely head over heels with that kind of return. There's no shame in taking $80 profits. There's no shame if it requires you to take a three contract trade and take it off at 80. Particularly nowadays where commissions aren't a concern. And that's exactly right, Alan. Once you build that account up and say, hey, now, instead of a one contract trade, I am taking a two contract or three contract trade or a four contract trade or a 10 contract trade or a 20 contract trade. You know, guys, I'm working with an individual coaching who's trading a multi-million dollar account right now. Using the same strategy that we talk about every single day. He's gone from a losing trader to a winning trader. And you want to talk about scaling it up? He's still using about 3% of his account. But in January, he made over $100,000. Only using about 3% of his account and just trading 3-8 traps, simple trades, repeating it over and over and over and over, and he made 100 grand in one month's period of time. Put that into perspective of your trade, and that's a small percentage gain in his overall account. Put that into perspective in your account. We can do the same thing. 
And all he did was scale it up. Scale up the same plan. He just takes more, more risk when he puts on the trade because he can. So if your tolerance is that smaller trade, an 80 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, if you could do that two or three times a week and just keep doing that, what's wrong with that? And if you can do that here and take that three contract trade and take your 80 or $100 profit out right here and leave one contract and just see how much more that could make. Just trail it up with the stop loss. Just follow the price action. How cool that would be. Yeah, $380 a win a week gets you 960 bucks a month. You're, you're close to making $1,000 a month or 10% gain on your account with three $80 wins. And when we, when we look at our trading that way, can we be picky? Can we be picky and say, hey, there's no reason for me to take these high risk trades or you know, fiddle fart around with earnings reports or um, all of this crap whipping around in the news. We don't have to worry about that. We can just be picky. Hey, I want the I want the easy trade. The trade that just is setting up, I want to make 80 bucks. And just keep doing that. And as soon as you feel comfortable to allow that trade to run a little bit more, you scale it up, you're trading two trades. Take one off, let one run. Three contracts, take two off, let one run. Four contracts, take two off, let two run. It all comes down to your trading plan and your discipline to follow it. I hope that makes some sense, guys, and I hope you got something good out of this. I mean, I, I've held you up here for about two hours. Um, but this is one of those really important subjects that if you can learn to get onto that and and just get comfortable with your trading. And I think the only way, guys, you're ever going to get comfortable with your trading is to be trading inside a solid plan. A plan that you know has a high expectancy rate. Okay? To stay inside that plan and just continue to work it forward. Okay? That's where the real money is here, here in the market. So develop that plan. Stop giving it lip service. Go to work and put that plan together. Okay? Thank you, guys. I really appreciate all the kind words. I appreciate it a ton. Yes, it is recorded. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and finish this recording up and say thank you, everyone, for being here. Truly, truly appreciate it. I really do hope you got something out of this. And, um, you know, feel free to ask questions about this stuff during the week, all right? Thank you, guys. I appreciate you a ton. Take care.